Hi there, Ian McCluskey here for the fourth in our seven part video on DC coupled system design. This is the longest section, sizing the solar PV array itself. In the next seven slides will cover each one of the design factors shown here and how to incorporate them into your calculations. We only go into so much detail on how to collect peak sun hour and power loss info as that should be familiar to anyone with grid tie solar design experience. Remember, the PV array may be oversized in multi-mode systems for net metering. So some of the principles applied here could vary in that case. Power loss is no fun, but it is the reality in battery-based systems. The electricity has to pass through many pieces of electronics, including the batteries, so the derating factor is bound to be significant. Battery efficiency is usually around 80% in lead-acid-based batteries. Conversion loss factor is based on controller efficiency, usually between 0.9 and 0.975. Temperature loss factor will be covered on the next slide, and the well-known PV Watts tool can help you determine the general loss factor based on conditions like shading and module mismatch. On the rough draft design, using rules of thumb such as 80% battery efficiency and 95% controller efficiency is okay, but always use the actual ratings direct from the data sheets for the final design run. All right, temperature loss factor, what I call TLF, may not come into play in climates like Seattle or Maine, but everywhere else we should not overlook, overlook it. In fact, in tropical climates, I've seen it drive projects well above the expected budget, which is no fun to find out during the install. Remember, we are going back to our summer and winter average watt hours per day figures to size the PV array. So we need monthly average high temperatures, not just the annual maximum. Each solar module has a unique temperature coefficient of max power, abbreviated as TKPMP, which is the power loss per degree Celsius over standard test conditions, which happens to be 25 degrees Celsius. Important to note, this is always a negative value. Make sure to use it as such in the formula shown here. Once you run this formula to find the TLF for each and every month of the year, and they are all in the expected range, move on to the next slide. We can now identify the infamous worst case design month for a particular system, thereby determining the minimum PV array size. Remember, we are running this formula for each and every month, with each and every relevant data point we collected so far. I typically use the winter average watt hours per day for the months of October through March, and the summer average for April through September. This will take some time. In fact, I recommend plugging the formula into an Excel sheet and keeping it on file for future designs. Take your time and make sure not to miss any factors. Now, what month had the highest minimum PV array size? That's your worst case design month. If you haven't already purchased or at least picked out your modules, go with an expected rating, say 300 watts. This is a bit easier to adjust down the road than say battery or inverter selections. The first formula here, minimum array divided by module rating, gives us the minimum number of modules required to power all of our critical loads in the worst month of the year. The next question, is whether that number will fit evenly on our charge controller or controllers. If you have not picked out a charge controller model yet, take a look at the data sheets of the charge controllers listed on Renvu.com to get a sense for the different sizes. Our 25 module example here, in fact, would probably require two 60 or maybe 80 amp charge controllers, depending on the climate, typically. All of the ratings required for the second formula here are readily available on the equipment data sheets. Remember that the temperature coefficient of open circuit voltage, abbreviated as TKVOC, is a negative value. The formula shown here may remind you of the temperature loss factor we used to size the PV array as a whole. But instead of the average monthly high, we are using the absolute max design temp for the system location. This is to ensure that no matter how hot it gets, the system never shuts off due to low power. The power percentage difference is going to be a factor less than one, and we'll use it in the next calculation. By the way, as the slide states, the minimum modules per string is more subjective in how future ready you want your design to be. Modules are bound to degrade over time, maybe 20% over 25 years, giving us a future derate factor of 0.8. That's one minus 0.2, of course. If you use a higher factor, say 0.9, your solar voltage may sag below the battery voltage 15, 20 years down the road when the temperature is very high and the batteries won't be charging. Now that we know the lowest possible voltage, We'll address the cardinal rule of charging batteries. They will not charge unless the input voltage is higher than the battery voltage. For a design, the most important of a battery's many voltage ratings is the bulk charge voltage, also known as the absorb voltage. Check out the Trojan Solar Signature 
235 amp hour example shown here. This was taken directly off the data sheet. There are lots of voltages in that table and only one is correct. For my 48 volt example, the correct one is 58.8 volts in the upper right corner. But this may look completely different on other manufacturers' data sheets. The formula here is the last in our series to setting the parameters on our PV erase size, giving us the minimum modules in series required to steadily charge the battery bank in any condition. If you are having a hard time keeping all these formulas and principles in context, I promise that having a real life system example, or at least a made up system example, and taking it from the top will tie everything back together. Now, just because we know the minimum number of total modules and the max and minimum in series to stay in the appropriate voltage window, we still do not know exactly what the array will look like. This is because the array configuration in series and parallel must be compatible with the, to with the model and number of charge controllers selected, which we will cover next. Only three more videos left and they are pretty quick. Stay tuned.